Hey yo, hump day just got better. Did you know that the six restaurant and lounge is now open in the heart of Atlanta? Come catch a vibe while trying out our signature cocktails, food and hookah. Major key alert. Major key alert. You know we couldn't vibe out on Wednesdays by ourselves. We have the hottest radio personalities from Hit 92.3 ATL Combo with Friends vibing with us every Wednesday night from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. They'll be having a live show. That's right, a live show. Don't miss out on Friends Night starting Wednesday, September 1st, and every Wednesday thereafter at the 6 Restaurant and Lounge from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Tell all your friends to come out and catch a vibe. We are located at 904 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Hey friends, this is Rodney. What's up fam, this is Lakiba. Hey to the now, it's Nasha. How y'all doing, it's LeBron. And welcome to Combo with Friends. Friends. And they got the fight Where? at the farmer's market oh Friday. Why did I call the police? Stitches get snitches get stitches. You know, stay out there. No, I called the police because they was about to kill each other. And why did the police put me on hold? And why did they the tell me? The police put you on hold. They put me on hold. They never came to the phone. Actually, it was an auto system. I was like, is this the 911? I kept looking at the phone like, police put me, see, see you see what y'all voted in? Like, the police put me on hold. And y'all, why did the police did not call me back until two hours later? I was nowhere near the farmer's market. Damn. So you telling me now you could be outside in the streets, there's do whatever, and you could be shed for somebody in death. Were well, you in the hood? Oh, I mean, it wasn't the hood. It was over by Cascade. It was the good hood. Oh, that's the good hood. That's the good hood. And they got the fight. And one guy was like, you stole my phone. Dude was like, no, I didn't. Next time, they both put out a knife. One guy got cut. I'm talking about his finger was cut. Blood was everywhere. And I called the police, y'all. And they placed me on hold. And they and it was so crazy because they did not call me back until two hours later. And I was nowhere on the scene. So they was like, uh, is everything okay? And it, for a matter of fact, when they called me back, it wasn't even a live person that called me back. So I stayed on the phone to a live person to tell her everything. I wasn't nowhere near them. But from my understanding, one of the guys went to the hospital. Hopefully they are. Yeah, it this. sounds like it's a purge going on, y'all. y'all. Y'all see what y'all voted in? What you mean when, when you, we voted in? When you say defund the police, no matter how ratchet and crazy they can be sometimes. And when you say <laughs> defund the police, like it becomes a ripple effect, a domino effect. And when you call the police now, they don't just come. I understand for a car accident, but they need to at least screen the call. They need to have someone screening the calls to say, okay, it's in the red. Okay, it's in the yellow. Okay, it's in the orange. So, and because we voted Democrat, that means to say that it's, the, the cops ain't coming because we voted But because you know what, say that, Coke, you, you asked about my week, Nasha. You know, you went you on a whole week, tangent. Right? tangent. Took over two minutes. So I, ain't, I only got one I minute. Need my, I need my one own minute show. One minute talking about that week. <laughs> my but, lives be an hour and a half. My lives be But I want to say congrats to Nasha. We went and closed the deal. <gasps> At the six, at so we're gonna six? be hosting at the six from at, nine p.m. to twelve p.m. starting September the first. You, you gotta say that with a little bit energy. You gotta yeah, push, I'm happy. You, yeah. My voice is on. Put some energy into that. From nine p.m. to twelve a.m., your boy, your friends, come over. Friends will be at the six. Bring everybody you Turn know. Turn up what after you, the show. Right, what you say? After party. Bring everybody you right, know. Like, what you say? Turn all the way up. All the way. <laughs> Hey, 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 after the show, the after party. But also, is. this weekend, you guys, I'm going to be at the award show, Fox Show. We'll be oh filming God, the Black Media amazing. Honors. The tickets are $100. It's going to be Saturday and Sunday. The award show is at Sunday, starting at 6 p.m. If you want to go, click on Black Media Honors um, Instagram page. Go on their website, and you can, like, sign up. But I'm really excited about that. I'm I might so come support you. I might put you. some come clothes out, on. Come out. Put some clothes on and go it, it, and support It's dressed to impress. Can I, can I borrow $100? Uh, my mom is walking the red carpet with me. <gasps> oh, my God. I cleaned out my house today up and down. I did a whole spring She's on cleaning. her way. She's mama on her way right I'm now. I'm so excited for you, and I'm proud of you, too, Thank right you, now. man. Like, people are saying, like, it's hard. It's hard work, and it's good to see somebody recognizing my hard work. And You do a lot for us. Pray to God that I win this. When it's Jesus, a you definitely because the price it. gonna go up. <laughs> when it's up, it's up. And yes, it's Cardi B. <laughs> but all right, you guys. Now we're going to say me call business of the week, and the business of the week is actually 
Good old Nene Leaks. The Lanithia's Lounge. Amazing. All right. If you want to go have a good hookah, you know, you want to go have good food, good drinks. Like you see celebrities up in there, you want to be part. You know, some people like to be with the celebrities, like um, the what's in her, crowd. What her name said, um, hang around bar, trying to hang with the stars. What's her Erica name? Erica Badu. Y'all know mm-hmm. Erica Badu was talking about y'all. So yeah, but I'm just being for the note for though. Nene Lee's Lounge is the place to be. The phone number is six seven eight six nine one eight seven five six, and the address is two two. 2255 Pleasant Hill Road, Suite 470, Duluth, Georgia, 30096. Again, and the business of the week is the, the Lanithia Lounge. Hey, to the now. All right, now we're going on to the segment, y'all. And we're going to send me called Google News. All right, you guys. So this is what's going on in Google News. This ain't really good because Taliban's out there to, to kill y'all people. As the Taliban makes their way to Cabal, Biden ordered troops into Afghanistan. President Biden gave the orders last Thursday to send U.S. troops into Afghanistan as it became clear that the Taliban were overrunning Afghanistan government forces on their way, taking Cabal. And this is what's going on, you guys. So we are sending over 3,000 troops back over there. The Taliban is releasing over 5,000 people who are major threat to the world who are terrorists. So they are going to prisons and releasing all the terrorists that we locked up back in 2000, like four and five and six and all that stuff. And so my question to you guys is this. Do you think that the U.S. should interfere with another country's problem? To me, for me, it's the gift and the curse with it. Because if you don't, if you don't get involved, eventually they come over here. So uh, you kind of nip it in the bud as soon as possible. Uh, this is still going on from 9-11. So I think I think it's a good idea. It's a smart idea. But the whole thing about it is the only thing I don't like about it is once they go over there, they'll be over there forever. Like it seems like it takes forever to clean up everything. So, you know, I, you know I'm just going to pray for the troops and hopefully they can get back as soon as possible. Yeah, because it's tens of thousands of our Americans that's there. And what I didn't like about what just went on, like we removed the troops from over there, but there's still globs of Americans over there. So with that being said, really, I think we should not interfere with other countries. We got way too many issues that's going on here in America. And what end up happening, they end up becoming refugees here, but without streaming these folks. And then we wonder why things like 9-11 happens. Like we're just too friendly. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if we are indebted to these countries that we just allow to flood our, our streets and flood our homes and our neighborhoods. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced whatsoever if you can bring value to our country yes you are welcome but if you're not really down with our country you're just coming over here as a, a secret agent or what would you call it a spy um, a spy and you're you're really here to destroy our land like stay where you are and if we're going to step anything we should accept women and children like women and children period like it's just too much going on in the world i just don't trust the situation especially with 9 11 happening and one thing i gotta say about president trump y'all like he was not for it like he was not for the pushover he told them what it was like he told them at the end of the day like the, the people was afraid of him that's why i feel like um fuck shit didn't happen too much when he was in the office messed up Messed up. I forgot this on the radio. Wow. I'm trying to be professional, y'all. That's what happens. That's what happens when you mention Trump is the negativity just spews. Yeah, it's just negative. Out of your mouth is a spews. Yeah, and as for me, I'm kinda on the fence with you and Nasha between you um and running Nasha. Well L Boogie, I'm sorry. <laughs> L Boogie. Um, it's because like we have so much going on and it's so much money that's allocated as wasted on other country and country affairs and we have people about to be homeless. Like, I think mm-hmm. it's more important things. And unfortunately, if the country cannot, we've been up for a long time, y'all, a long A time. And I just feel like it's time to come home. It's time to come home. People have been over there since 2005. Don't you know the Taliban is preventing people from leaving and entering the country? And so um, with that being going on, it's like and they're knocking at people's door looking for anyone that's from the Western yeah, they crazy. Now I do, but I feel like it's so many other countries as France, Great Britain. Let them like let give us a break. Let your we got stuff on. going. We got stuff going on over here. But you guys, that's all I have for good old Google News. <clears throat> all right, and now I'm gonna do Christian Lakiba segment because she's not here. 
praise God. Bear with me. <laughs> All right, her segment's called Conversation Does What? You guys, rule, rule the, the nation. nation. It gets rule the nation day, you guys. All right. New Jersey firefighter and his wife are charged with sexual assaulting a teen boy inside their home. According to Burlington County Prosecutor Scott Kofina, the firefighter and his wife have been charged with second degree sexual assault and third degree endangering the welfare of the child that they befriended. And her question for the table today, friends, is who can you really trust if you can't trust people who take an oath to serve and protect? What was they trying to have a threesome or something? Like, it don't matter he was a child. I don't know if to say it. I'm not agreeing with it. But um, when I read the article, because I actually researched this, they didn't give his age. So he could have been like 17 to look like a grown man. It don't matter. He's, he's They prosecuted. It says teen. And teen. then the, the wife actually lured him. From my understanding, one of the websites said the wife lured him. So in other words, it was almost like the guy was friends with the husband. And I'm just putting two to two together. The guy was friends with the husband. You know how you have your little teenage friend in the neighborhood. He was hanging out with the husband. And the wife was, quote, unquote, she looked like she's somebody that would have sex with a teenager. But the wife was trying to what see What was their origin? Um, the guy was, like, Mexican or Hispanic. And then the wife was looked like she's from, like, like hillbilly. Oh, okay. she was like wow. so she looked like she had sex with kids like um but i don't put that past i don't what? feel like i don't feel like he really was for it unless he was allowing the teenager to have sex with his wife well, I'm i don't say, know i'm gonna say this um i think it's effing disgusting um just like this guy the famous guy that he's gay <clears throat> but he's real popular on instagram he's like a fitness person he was a firefighter as well or MET, one of them oh people <clears throat> over there mess, watching child perform, like child porn and all that stuff. That's weird. It's too many free people I giving away for free for you to be messing with children. I don't care. I don't care if that child find themselves. Wait till they turn eighteen. And if you Wait just got a they fetish for little people, just go get you a midget girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? That could be like, you know, and have a dress up like a little kid. and <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Go, go get you a bird-chested woman and just have her pro play. I mean, everybody have a fantasy, so I'm not Yeah, I mean, people people's do. People's fantasy. Like school girls, school you know what I'm saying? Fantasy. But when you go to but the But it's just nasty. I, I'm, it's, <laughs> basically, it's a no for me. El Boogie, how you feel? So the question was, if... It says, "Who can you really trust if you can't trust the people who took an oath to save, to serve, to save and protect?" I guess supposed to be serve and protect as well. But my whole thing is, I'm not surprised by anything. Uh, serve and protect means what we believe serve and protect means. Some of the firefighters and police officers don't believe that. Yeah. So we have we see that in in the situations with black young men getting shot, people getting shot in general. So firefighters are no different. They're human. They can make mistakes. So at the end of the day, I just think they got to do a, a lot more vetting. They got to, I think it's too easy to get them positions. Like, you know, you can go to barber school longer than you go to police academy. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. You mm -hmm. go to a barber school longer than you do a police academy. Wow. That's so, I seen that on Instagram or somewhere. Yeah, that's not, that's so, we just got to do a better job in the people that we pick. Just because, you know, just, you, it's almost like when you marry somebody. You know, when you, when you get married, they say the first three years, you got to, before you propose, give them three years because eventually their true self's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same way when you when you putting people in those type of positions. You can't just go off of what they say. You got to do some deep investigations and, and see what type of people we put in those positions. Yeah, man. Like, and, it's like who uh, can we trust? I mean, like I said, I just witnessed someone about to kill somebody. And what they what escape said? Who can I run to? <laughs> who I can? Who protection. can? I, oh! Like protect yourself. <laughs> Just imagine if we lived in the purge, y'all, and everywhere we go, we had to fight off like, like, like mutants or something. You went like, off the deep end. Yeah, this is like, like this purge thing was. This is two segments in a row that this purge is. Did you up. want a purge, Republican like, Nasha? Sure? No, I do not want a purge. I love people. It's love, peace, and happiness. But I'm telling you, you have to be prepared to fight, guys. You have to be prepared to fight. I had. You know I agree I with that, but I guess I'm confused because we're talking about <laughs> yeah. a child being molested and <laughs> taken advantage of by okay. two grown people. So what? that's why I got confused. Like, I'm like, what do a person... If I'm they did say, it, they should be run? prosecuted to the, the fullest But save that tone because we got to go to a good old commercial we break. We got to go good old commercial. Got to pay these bills, you guys. Boo! Well, hump day has just gotten better. Did you know that the Six Restaurant and Lounge is now open in the heart of Atlanta? 
Come catch a vibe while trying out our signature cocktails, food and hookah. Major key alert, major key alert. You know we couldn't catch a vibe on Wednesdays by ourselves. We have the hottest radio personalities from Hot 92.3 Atlanta. Convo with friends, vibing with us every Wednesday night from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. They will be having a live show. That's right, a live show. Don't miss out on Friends Night starting Wednesday, September 1st. And every Wednesday thereafter at the 6th Restaurant and Lounge from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Tell all your friends to come out and catch a vibe. We are located at 904 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. Once again, that's 904 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive, Southwest Atlanta. Beat me there. All right, you guys. So that's, you know, come out and celebrate with the friends for Friends Night at the 6th Restaurant and Lounge, okay? Start September the 1st. We're going to be in there having a live show. Lit good up. Good Luca, good drinks. Lit up. And you just heard that amazing song by Jocelyn Hernandez. Do like it's my beat day. Live podcast, too. You can ask questions. It's going to be amazing. Yes. But now we're going to good old L Boogie segment. So L Boogie, what's going on on your side of the streets, bro? Now in these streets, we talking about Dr. Dre's estranged daughter. She started a GoFundMe for a desperate situation. Uh, after doing some research, I come to find out that they haven't spoken in 18 years. Dr. Dre kind of cut her off simply because uh, she was talking a lot about him in the media. So I guess they, their relationship fell off. And right now she's home and she has four children. And uh, my question for, for my question for y'all is, do um, you think what when do you stop uh, taking care of your children? Like, at what point do you say you know what you're grown now, and it's time for you to be responsible and handle handle life for yourself? Mm, that's a hard question for me because I don't have children, but I do have a sibling. But no, he got mental problems, so they don't count. Um, for me, I don't think any parent just be financial take their child when they can do for themselves. Let me put that out there. When they can physically do for themselves, I'm talking about in a regular situation. Now, in Dr. Drake's situation, he's rich. He has money on top of money on top of money. So it's no way in the world that I will be worth almost a billion a billion dollars plus, almost at a billion. And any of my children is on the streets. That's that that's that's disrespectful. At some point, you got to show him some tough love. I mean, I'm sure over the years, he have gave her so much money. Why didn't she start her own thing? Like, you know how many people that wish they had those rich parents that gave them a little little, little helping hand, a little push up? A little sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle, sprinkle. You know what I'm saying? And you know how far, but it be those kids, the parents that give them everything, and they got everything, and they don't have no responsibility. So when now when they become adults, they're making, like, it's everybody's responsibility. Now... On the other hand, if he's paying his ex-wife such and such a millions of dollars in spousal support, then, you know, maybe he need to sprinkle, sprinkle a little way. Just, you know, just a little boost in the economy. You know what I'm saying? Just give a little, little something. But uh, after a certain time, y'all, grown people, grown people's grown people for a reason. See, I, you know? I, 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 I disagree. Like, I just feel like if, I'm, if I got that type of bag, I don't care what, what, what my daughter's going through. My dog, if, I, if I'm not seven, eight, eight hundred million dollars, I don't. My first of all, I got he got four grandchildren, so you can still yeah, do something for them. Too. Like you can do something for them, even if you don't even just take them. Like you can, okay, the kids are coming. You can give tough love to your, to a to a grown folk, to a grown child, your grown child, but your grandchildren have nothing to do with that. So I mean, it's like, I, but on the other hand, I don't know what he gave her already. I don't know what he did for her. Right. So she might have ran through that bag. I don't know what happened. But at the end of the day, he still got four grandchildren by her, and I just can't see him just leaving his grandchildren out like that. So you know, we gotta we gotta wait to see what yeah, Dr. Dre says. Yeah, we gotta follow up on that. Yeah, follow up on that for us, good old L Boogie. All right, now I'm going to Republican Nasha. All right, Republican Nasha, what's on your side of the street, sis? Hey to the now, hey to the now, friends, back at it again. Ratchet to conservative views. <laughs> Oregon. School board votes to ban Black Lives Matters and the Pride flag in school. In my opinion, let kids be innocent. Should the system, um, we um, we should have uh, systems in place. We should have systems in place that enforce 
children to be kind to one another. Yes, we should. Let kids be kids. Leave them out of all this political and vices and signage and all this. Now, me personally, I don't feel that teachers should be walking around with these shirts on. We should not be persuading our kids to do nothing that, that's not already in them. And if you see a child that's already that way, or if you see a child that's being picked on, then it's, it's, it's uh, adults is to remind the kids how we should definitely be treated. So in other words, with that being said, without reading, <laughs> guys, um, do you agree with them hanging political signage and vice signages at schools um, that, um, is that making the kids feel safe or comfortable? Um, I'm going to say this. We live in America and we should be live in liberty to wear anything you want to wear. As long as it's not a cuss word, pro, um, prerogative or profanity. And a pride fag, a, uh oh, a fag. A, oh, a pride what? flag. I meant to say flag. <laughs> Lord Jesus. A pride flag and the Black Lives Matter sign and symbol is not going to offend anyone. And if it offends you, take that with your mom and daddy. There's something wrong with your child. Because in day like, I, I could come in and say gay all day. That has nothing to do with you. It's my shirt. It's my body. You know what I'm saying? As long as I'm not disrupting the class, not disrupting the school system, and not disrupting the, um, the flow of school, it's okay to me. And I believe uh, school should definitely be safe and comfortable for all students. These messages can be a domino effect on our society. Um, with that being said, like of years and years of just installing certain things in kids' heads, like, okay, now we're saying Black Lives Matter, so what? Is white people going to be the new slaves? Are we going to just treat white people bad because of some things that we went through with release? But police white people need to know what the hell they, what their ancestors did. But, but let's say from the front L Boogie real quick. Listen, what look, you got to say? I feel like this. I feel like this. Uh, everything should be allowed. If everything is allowed, is allowed in society now, everything should be allowed. They don't, they don't censor stuff on television no more. So why censor the children from anything else? A Black Lives Matter shirt shouldn't bother anyone the same way as a is a uh, the uh, the gay flag shouldn't bother anyone. Pride. Everything Correct the great excuse me pride. the pride <laughs> the pride flag. So at the end of the day, they're 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 putting all types of stuff in our faces now on television, and the world is just different. The world is different. We're at a it point is. now where everybody has their own their their right to the to believe what they want to believe in. So I I don't see why I take anything out of the school. I I, I would be really. I would be really proud if, if 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 my son or daughter went to school with a Black Lives Matter shirt on and they were and they were African American kids. Why not do that? Why not be proud proud of who you are and represent represent something that you think is a positive vibe? I don't I don't I don't understand why they always try to stop stuff like that. I understand. I'm just one of those people that feel uncomfortable if someone said white power or if someone said Black Lives Matter, like you know, I know who my friends are. I know when I'm looking at somebody, I know what color they are, but that doesn't define them as a person. But you know what, not So I think we should leave the clear, clear, uh, critical race theory out of schools. That's all I'm saying. I ain't going to say that, but uh, we, I really want to bring that back up. That's going to be a good debate. It takes away the history. Me and you, because we're going to talk about that in another time. But before we get to our good old guests, we got the segment called Whack Ass of the Day. And whack ass of the day go to North Carolina lawmakers who anonymously voted Tuesday to raise the legal age of marriage from 14 to 16. I think that's disgusting. Disgusting. But hey, I guess some people was in the wrong state. If they was in North Carolina, they, they could have dated their child. They lowered. They lowered. They up it. They went from fourteen to sixteen. Well, that's not. That shouldn't be. You shouldn't be upset about that. They raised it. It was at fourteen at Hell, one time. Hell, what is sixteen? It's better than fourteen. Oh my God. Okay. So, do the parents have to sign for this? Even at sixteen? No. Like, they. I guess they are consenting adults. Like that's weird, but that's what that's going crazy. on with. <laughs> that's who got. So, you know, you know, North Carolina is considered the Bible Belt, right? It is nasty. So they do a lot of stuff in regards to the Bible. So I will say this, and then we can go because to our wonderful guests. You know, uh, God, Mary was fourteen years old, so we can move on. Okay. okay. Well, thank you for the thank uh, you. Good old Bible. You know a lot about the Bible, Bible stuff. I'm gonna have Bible I ain't gonna say Bible I love the Lord. But now we have a good old guest in the building who is one of my good friends sitting right across from me, good old Miss Lisa George. 
And Miss Lisa George is one of the founders of I Crush Goals. And she really does, Sean. She has an amazing story. Hey, Lisa, Lisa is also a Les Brown trained speaker, best selling mm-hmm. author, and host. Amazing. All right. And I love that. So, Miss Lisa, jo- yeah, Miss Lisa George, <laughs> please tell the people who you are. I'm my mama's child. <laughs> <laughs> Pull up like a limo, sister. You know, let people hear that good old speaking voice. I am my mama's child. My name is Lisa Yolanda George, and all the wonderful things that he said, I never get tired of hearing it. I am holding my book. I am now an Amazon best-selling speaker. I mean. Awesome. Awesome. So that was exciting. Amazing. I like to really say that I'm a vessel of love first, and then my earthly titles are the things that you named. Yeah, so how did Alicia George come into about? What trial and tribulation did Alicia go to, did Lisa go to to make her who she is now? You know, I think all of us have things in our life that define us. What I'm doing is speaking more about it. I was actually reading some parts of my book when I came over because people have been throwing it back to me. Like, so I went through something, a lot of medical stuff a couple of years ago, and I, I'm from, from the Caribbean family. So if anyone knows Caribbean people or just black people or just some kind of families, keep your stuff to yourself. But I decided to talk about it. You know, I started posting on social media. And of course, you can see my family just kind of, what is she Cringing. doing? <laughs> but from my story, there were people who actually went and got tested for various things, and then they came back and told me, thank, they thanked me for talking about my story because it encouraged them. So I use my trials and tribulations to motivate others to just be more authentic and walk their walk in whatever way they're motivated to do that. All right, but show the people your book. What is the name of your book? Celebrating Life, Celebrating You, what that looks like during um, regular times. Let me get this right. Celebrating Life, Celebrating You, what that looks like on a daily basis and especially during challenging times. So what was a challenging time other than your health issues? Mm, you know, a lot of stuff. Like, one thing that's really huge for me right now is breaking generational curses and mm. healing my inner child. So, have all y'all heard about healing the inner child? Healing child, yes. Yeah. Yes. I've been and working on it. Yeah, that. so, like, literally, I have been dramatic with mine. Like, I'm in the morning, I'm like, I'll eat cookies because that's why I heal my inner child. But, yeah, so just reversing a lot of things that I learned that aren't serving me the way I know it should because there were a lot of things that were taught to me as many other people in love but they were not necessarily the best things for my journey. So those type of things. Mm. Mm. I would definitely, um, I, I'm going to pick up that book because I've actually been meditating. Do you meditate on yoga? Do. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yoga, I meditating. I yeah. felt the spirit when you came in. I was like, she's oh. so free spirit. Like, oh. And my friends say I say too much, but I think it's, and I've been meditating for almost a year now, and I'm learning how to just be myself. Like, first thought, say it. You know, we, we always be like, you know, like, like think before you speak, but then that's not authentic. Right. If you're sitting around worrying about what other people feel after you say things. Yeah. So how did you get over like, um, what, what's some of the things you do for like basic public speaking? Wow. So just honestly, just really trying to be myself. As you were talking, I thought about, there's a Japanese saying, I can't quote it, but it's something about we all have three faces. One, we show the public when we show our family and then when we show ourselves and the first time i saw it i was kind of like ooh. i mean because when you think about that to me it's kind of crazy you know what i mean so are you being yourself and so using that concept i just i made a promise to myself to merge the three because you know no lying to myself that i probably have three faces as well so merge them and in that merging i just learn more about myself and i present that to people which is why you picked up on my spirit Oh, okay, because I've read in some book about indoor outdoor behavior, and I know mm-hmm. you had mentioned earlier, Laron, about when you first start dating someone, they always show you their interview self. Yes. And yes. the last time I was in an interview, guys, and they said told me to be myself, I didn't get the job, but it made <laughs> I learned a lot about myself, and I was like, well, maybe. But you know what? It may have not been the job for you, right? I was That's listening to something with Jada Pinkin, and she was saying we look at adversity as like a bad thing. But it's something, something, we're trying to be redirected. So it may not have been for you and nor you for it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You sound very powerful and I well, definitely want to you. get your book. Thank you. Yeah, I definitely commend you on what you're doing. I remember it was a time in my life when I was going through some rough spots and um, I just sat down one time and thought to myself, what am I going to do in, in regards to it? Either you can allow it to, to crush you. What I did was I told myself I'm going to be somebody else's Bible. 
Meaning what I'm going to do is I'm going to let somebody look at my trials and tribulations and learn from it. Mm -hmm. So I started a youth ministry in, in Buffalo in my church. So I really commend you because it takes a lot for somebody to be able to tell their truth to someone because yeah. you know you get judged. Yeah. So so, mm -hmm. so what type of, uh, what, how was your thought process when you, when you decided, you know what, I'm just going to be a motivational speaker and hopefully somebody takes my story and learns from it? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I didn't decide it was already in me. Mm. And that's the thing. Like if you walk, the yes. more you walk your, on your journey, it's a calling almost. Yeah, your gifts will be revealed. And so I've discovered so many things. I mean, writing, singing. I can sing really well. I'm a soprano. I'm not going to do it now. But, you know, just discuss, I say that jokingly, but seriously to say I discover things and go, wow, but it was already in me. No one came and injected me with a singing voice or a writing voice. Those are things already in me. It's in us. So, Part of my journey is to help people find out not who they are like they don't know it's already in us you gotta but the journey it. the journey is not easy because you will lose people people think of you oh, crazy Lord. then there are those lonely times and then there are times where you feel like oh, maybe i should just stop this but it's more comfortable for me to be in this space than the other because i was being someone else for other people but not happy say that one more time please the last part yes <laughs> that I was i was i'm more comfortable now because i was being someone else for other people and not me why do people do that be not be themselves to make everyone else happy because it's easier to judge right it's easier just to go along like in the moment it's easier like i could i thought about not wearing black Right? It's like, that's not a color to wear when you're going on camera. You know the kind of clothes we're supposed to wear. But now it's like, I'm in the mood to wear this hat and this black lips. I literally, that's what it was. It was all mood. And I was like, I'm going to wear it. And then I had some other color shoes. But then I was like, I feel like wearing this one. So I'm going to wear that. And that's all me. Well, you look good. Well, I thank you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> but yeah, you know, I'm saying that to say, you know, if it was all me, like, what is going to make me happy? And I didn't walk in here naked. Now, that would have been a problem. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm happy. And hopefully, y'all are getting good vibes from me. I'm getting good vibes from y'all. Yes. And, you know, so... Yeah, why do people do that? Because it's easier. It's easier. Yeah. I have another question for you because I know what a less brown trained speaker is, <laughs> but people don't know. Please tell that. What does what what does that mean yeah. for a public speaker to have that trained? It's actually wonderful because he's one of the best, if not the best, in the entire world. And so there's a. I think a six week training that we went to and it was last year, he did the program for several months and so allowed for those of us who were started in it to just kind of go. But to be trained by him is amazing. And he would always ask us, are you coachable? You know, and if you were, then you would take in stuff. So I learned a lot, but it's not really about the speaking. He really taught me to dig in. Like I always give him mm. shout outs and say, thank you so much for helping me dive into myself. And that's how I discovered more of my voice. Wow, amazing. Thank you. That is so good. So now you are with a group of other young, beautiful women. And men. And men. And, oh. And men. Okay, I didn't. Let okay. it go on a record that I said that. Okay. <laughs> so what is I Crush Goals? I Crush Goals is something that I'm discovering more and more, you know, as I move along. It was a divine instruction for me in twenty nineteen to form and I didn't know why. I was really busy. Who's never not busy? But I just did it because I like following the instruction. And then as I moved along, I realized what it is. And it's a safe space for people, safe space for people who want to be themselves and be among others who are thriving but not feel bad. And so just a quick quote. Like I saw something that said, you know, they say move in silence. But why do we move in silence? Hmm. Probably because we don't want people to steal our idea, judge us, you know, whatever. But if you're around people who are not concerned about that, then you can talk about it. And I just discovered that about a week and a half ago. So that's what iCrush goals is. It allows people to talk about their stuff and celebrate their goals. So we say things like we ride air and air riders, and we celebrate small wins, you know? Um, and it's a wonderful space. A lot of people tell me what it is, and that's where I got the word safe space, because it's a, it's a safe space for them to be. I think it's very important for people to for people to create safe spaces mm -hmm. and understand what that word truly means. Like a safe place, you're not judged yeah. for how you think. You're not judged, and that's what 
couple of friends principles I stood upon because we all different. Mm -hmm. I might not agree with Nasha, Nasha vice versa, Lauren, Lucky, but she's not here today. Yeah. But we all have a voice, and our voice matters. Yep. So I, I and I love that you said a safe place because mm -hmm. you fit right on in because oh, yes. i question goals hey come on friends yeah. we're here yeah 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 <laughs> i feel i feel like that's a nice place to build like it's a, it's a good positive place for you to, like your self-esteem automatically has to be built up you have to be very self-confident just simply because there's other people there see when it's like when it's a group of people and they're all for your good, mm -hmm. it automatically makes you comfortable with who you yes. are. You're, you're, you're not afraid no longer to, to let go and let everybody mm -hmm. see who you really are. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of times with strangers, it's hard It's hard to, to come around a strange person and and not just be yourself. That's why a lot of people put the mask on. They don't have a mask on. It's mm -hmm. hard for people to, they're not even comfortable with yourself yet. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great thing to do, have a, have a nice safe place where everybody is on one accord. Yeah. But you know, I actually find it easier to be myself around strangers than those who know me. You know, because right, really, yeah. Mm. You know, because they, people have you like. Just think about it. Who do you all know? And just think about it. That has you stuck in 1992 or 19, you know, 2010. And when you're talking, they will let you grow, right? And you're like, I don't do that anymore, or I'm not that person, or yeah. when you're talking to them. The way you, you can tell in the in the conversation that you're not having the same conversation because they have you somewhere else, yes. and you're like, that's not me, you know. Like, like someone it's easier to sell to a stranger than right? your own family. They, they don't know what to expect. They don't. They have no history, so it's just, yes. you know. Now, I'm not okay. saying there isn't any judgment, but at least it's easier because people come with their preconceived, like you just whispered, you know, that that you know about that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I yeah. love that. I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Because like when Nini said this, that was then what is now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, sometimes I just let all, all things slide and go like, that's not me, you know. And my son, who knows me, is really, really well. But I raised him. You know, he was like, "Mommy, you know, that's not you. There's that. That's not even you." I was like, "No, it's not." But I'm not here to help you correct your thoughts about me because that's I have to worry about me I have my own healing my own growing my own things so whatever you want to think because that's what you decided to think that's not my business it's wow. something that you said that stuck out to me and I'm just putting my words so it's it's okay to toot your own horn without bragging mm -hmm. and it sounds like those group of people that you hang with it's okay you all go around tooting each other's horn because mm -hmm. you know have you ever been with around that one friend or that one family member and you say you did something amazing and they're like Nah, like it was mm -hmm. just like, but then so when you get around people that you should be supercharged up around, you don't really know how to mm -hmm. ignite that energy because mm -hmm. you're like, uh, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging about what's what good is going on in my life. Mm -hmm. But see, now, that's horrible. And that does sound horrible. Yeah, right? yeah, that's a bad thing. I'm not like that. I'm totally opposite. I don't need nobody to tell me I'm doing great. Right. Nobody. I used to. I'm not gonna lie. I used to be that person. But right now I am now is not that person anymore. Good. Like I I know I'm grown. I have grown tremendously. I was horrible back then. Mm -hmm. But Miss Lisa George, how can the people book you, find you, buy your book? This is this this take this little last segment is all about you. Oh, thank you. And I feel so special for that. My book Celebrating Life, Celebrating You is on Amazon. My best selling book is on Amazon.com. People can find me on Carpen DMs and stuff, and that's a play on Carpe DM. You know, Carpe DM sees the day. And just the, with that, to help people remember, I always say, people think that we can't seize the day if we're not in high places, but that's not true. If you get up and make the bed, and that was the best you could do that day, you seize the day. So that's where the stuff comes in. You know, so regardless of what the stuff is you're going through, you can still seize the day. So carpendmsandstuff.com, Facebook, IG, my website. Yes, and what's the website for the I Crush Goals? iCrushGoals.com. There you go. See, that's called Good Brandy. Boom, boom. And Miss that. Lisa, that was yours. <laughs> we want you to keep sticking around for the letter because we have a friends who write in for the letter and we love for our guests to. Okay. No, this, you won't rock until we close out. Okay. All okay. right. All right. Then we got voice. All right. All right, y'all. Right. Right, Ooh, my voice is going out. <laughs> you don't need that. You've been singing today? I have been singing, but Have uh, you really? No, yeah, I, I sing in the car when I'm driving. Okay, okay. It's probably like 
30 minutes for me with oh. traffic. Without traffic, it's probably like 20. Mm. Not really bad, but yeah, my voice is, I, I, I felt bad. Because okay. I have to make a voice again for Miss Lisa. George! All right. <laughs> I feel special. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you get your, get your, get your, get your, get your, uh, let me get my throat yeah, get clean. Your, get your throat right so you can get this right. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> we are now coming to the segment called The Letter, read by Nasha, 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 Nasha. The Letter. Hey, friends. I love that you guys answer letters. From your fans. I hope my letter gets picked. I seriously need some advice. I am dating a black. I am a black man and I'm dating a white woman for the past two years. I know she's the one for me, but I haven't asked to meet her parents just yet but I haven't met anyone in her family besides her sister. Every time I want to meet her parents, she always has an excuse as to why we can't meet. I don't feel comfortable asking her to marry me if I haven't met her entire family. What do you think I should do? Should I let her go? All right, we always let our guests go first. So, Miss Lisa George, public speaker, motivational specialist, what would you say to this young black man? From what you just read, it sounds like he already knows what he should do. I always said our spirit, our soul talks to us, our gut feeling is our best friend. Uh-huh. So it sounds like he already knows. It's a he, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, knows what he should do. Red flags are there to redirect, redirect. Two years and of excuses and now here's the explanation but that doesn't come before the gut the guts first um you know red flags not reading the same you know wondering why he hasn't met the parents no i would it sounds like her parents um probably don't approve of him and i I don't want to say because he's black i'll say it because he's black continue okay well maybe he don't have the the job or the finances for their daughter. I don't think that's the issue. Um, I think because the run said it, it we, it's, I mean, it's elephant in the room, but it's because he's black. And I hate that he had to write in the letter to us to get the truth. But yes, uh, um, good friend, good sir, good man, you're black. And, and she's probably not racist, but her family is racist. So she don't want to mix the two and mess what she got going on. But actually, if y'all getting married, y'all have kids, how you want your kids to be treated? If you already know how your family is, like you don't want that to be an issue. That's wrong and it's scary. And it's it's you don't want her to choose between you and the family. Like so sometimes I mean you answer, should I let it go? I mean, if it's gonna be an issue with you being black, man. Let go. Let go. Let it go. Let what let LeBron go. said. I'm you, I think that was the person knows. Oh my gosh. I feel like this. Let me let me let me so I got a nephew that that's in the same situation but he met the whole family I feel like this this is just my personal opinion um if I can't meet your parents in two years I don't need to write a letter into 92.3 and convo with friends I just automatically know there's something wrong so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask my lady is there issue with your parents and me and you already know what the issue is she may say no there's no issue she may say they don't like your job. But nine times out of ten, it got something to do with your skin tone. The reason being is this. I don't know how old you are. You may be, let's just say you're between the age of 34. 30, 34? No, he didn't say. Just say you're 35 to 25. What we need to understand is people in that age bracket, they are used to dealing with uh, people from outside their race. Like, it's a lot of that now. Integration is it's, it's everywhere. But... Their parents was raised totally different. So she might be totally dropped uh, head over heels in love with him. But her parents is coming from a whole different thought process. And I'm saying that because I remember when I could never bring a white woman home to my mother's house. She would go bananas. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, what it was. That was the rule. Sorry. 
that's just the rule back then. You can't. So like older people just got this. They still stuck in their ways. She might not be, but it is what it is. Your, your, your lady might love you, but her parents probably don't. So what you have to do is you gonna have to go ahead. And, you know, if you if you're living in Atlanta. Go and get your nice piece of this chocolate out here, man. It's a lot of this beautiful chocolate out here, boy. Go get you some of this chocolate. We give you cavities. Get this, oh get, get you know, I'm here, I'm here for the chocolate swirl. <laughs> That's chocolate in your life. Hey, Rodney. That's silly. So with that being said, friends, I hope we was able to give you enough advice to help you come to a solid decision. Um, hey, friends. Hey, friends. If you have any issues or you need some advice or you need um hey you just need a friend to talk to reach out to your friends here at combo with friends we are at you can reach out to us combo with friends, with friends combo with friends with an s at gmail.com that's combo with friends with an s at gmail.com so talking so calm yeah. <laughs> right i was like Okay. But friends, I need to take that speaking class with you, sister. We are coming to an end, um, and it's okay. But let me tell you something. Make sure y'all go buy Miss Lisa George's book. Lisa George, tell them what the name of the book is one more time. Celebrating life, celebrate you on Amazon.com. Amazon.com. It is the best selling. Best selling. Book. Yes. Yep. There you go. Mm-hmm. There Look at you God. go. And let me say, <laughs> and let me say this, good old friends. All right, you know, you want to donate to the podcast? You can also do that. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. We don't. I don't must stop. Just go to our website at www.convowithfriendspodcast.com. And again, that's www.convowithfriendspodcast.com. It's okay. We get Miss Lisa to get a y'all kill the background noise. We got. We gonna separate our good old sister. Okay. We'll celebrate our sister. What we're going to do is celebrate our sister. We're also going to celebrate that September 1st, we're going to be at Lounge, Six Lounge. We're going we gonna to turn Six. all the way, all the way, all the way. Yes. Come out to the live podcast. All right, Lisa, everything. come on out, too. It's right yeah. off MLK in the heart of Atlanta. Yeah. Bring your friends, too. September come on now. Come on and enjoy. Yes, please. Tell yes, your friends yes. to bring their friends, and we can all be friends. It's going to be a live show, so we will have guests. You know, Melissa might be a guest. You never know. Boom. Live podcast, live show. Go have a good time, good food, good Giveaways. Drinks. I know Rodney going to have some giveaways. You might have yeah, some Yeah, I will be giving y'all, you know, $25 Visa gift card, but oh, you have to work there. for it because you're going to need you to sign up for your email. Mm-hmm. We're going to get to that closer to the date. Well, unfortunately, friends, we are coming to the end. Friends, this is Rodney. This is Lisa. It's Leron. Bye for now. It's Nasha. All right, friends. Next time, same time, same place. Peace. 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 Hi, guys. This is your boy, Yet checking in. If you are enjoying our content, can you please follow us on IG and Facebook at Convo with Friends. And it's F-R-I-E-N-D-Z.